the airspeed indicator. On this dial, airspeed is displayed in knots and can be in miles per hour or both. And there's also a correction where true airspeed can be displayed if the temperature and pressure altitude are selected for the given conditions using a knob at the bottom right hand side of the instrument. In terms of a diagrammatic representation, it essentially looks like an altimeter with a box with static pressure on the outside and inside acting on a capsule attached to a linkage which provides a reading on a scale. The only difference really is, is that total pressure now goes to the inside of the capsule. Total pressure is equal to static pressure plus dynamic pressure. And dynamic pressure corresponds to half rho v squared. The airspeed indicator indicates the difference between pitot and static pressures, i.e. half rho v squared. A bimetallic strip compensates for expansion contraction due to temperature variations. The ASI is calibrated to the international standard atmosphere. ASI errors. Like all pressure instruments, it suffers from pressure and instrument error. Pressure errors due to disturbed airflow around the sensors and is typically tabulated in the flight manual. Instrument error is caused by inaccuracies in construction and determined during calibration. Compressibility causes an increase in measured dynamic pressure, i.e. the ASI overreads. Density, the international standard atmosphere values are used during calibration, so under any other conditions the instrument reading will be in error. There's a way of remembering these using a mnemonic iced T. I-C-E-T stand for indicated airspeed, calibrated airspeed, equivalent airspeed and true airspeed. If we start with indicated airspeed, the I from iced, if this is corrected for pressure and instrument error, this will result in calibrated airspeed. If calibrated airspeed is corrected for compressibility, this will result in equivalent airspeed. And if equivalent airspeed is corrected for density, a function of altitude and temperature, this results in true airspeed. Equivalent airspeed. Equivalent airspeed is the airspeed at sea level, which represents the same dynamic pressure as that flying at the true airspeed at altitude. It's useful for predicting aircraft handling, aerodynamic loads and stalling. There's a formula for it, which is equivalent airspeed equals true airspeed multiplied by the square root of the actual air density over standard air density. Standard air density is typically 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. Equivalent airspeed can also be obtained from the aircraft Mark number and static air pressure, whereby equivalent airspeed equals the local speed of sound at 15 degrees Celsius, 661 knots, mark number multiplied by the square root of the static air pressure divided by the standard sea level pressure, which is 1013 decibel 25 hectopascals. Errors of the ASI can be remembered using the acronym PUD-SOD. Essentially, if the PTO is blocked, the ASI will underread in a descent. PUD, PTO, underreads descent. If the static is blocked, it will overread in a descent. SOD. You can block the PTO port in this diagram, and static pressure will be equal at altitude 
and exerting a pressure on the airspeed indicator. Let's say you're flying at 250 knots. As you descend, static pressure increases. This will come in through the open static port to the inside of the casing to push onto the capsule. Total pressure is blocked. This is a blockage I'm discussing. So that static pressure on the inside will push on the capsule and make the instrument under read. A similar process can be used to determine the effect of a static port block in descent. So let's say you're flying along at 250 knots and the static port becomes blocked. This will trap the static pressure on the inside of the casing at that altitude. However, the total pressure is still entering the inside of the capsule. As you descend, total pressure outside will increase as static pressure increases in the descent. This will push on the inside of the capsule, causing the instrument to overread. The mnemonic PUD SOD can be reversed, although I don't recommend it, to come up with a term POC, suck for climbs. It's just a lot easier really to remember PUD SOD and then if you get a climbing question, it's just to reverse, uh, reverse the uh, effect in your mind. If you're level with a block pitot, the ASI will not react to speed changes. How can it? Static pressure is the same at that particular altitude flight level. The dynamic pressure change it will not be picked up. However, as I mentioned, block static in the descent, the ASI will overread. In the climb, the ASI will underread. There's a relationship between calibrated airspeed, true airspeed, and Mark number with altitude. And there's a graphical method for determining how they change with each other. So if you were to climb at a constant calibrated airspeed, fixed value, true airspeed will increase and mark number will increase at a greater rate. If you were to climb at a constant true airspeed, calibrated airspeed would decrease and mark number would increase. And lastly, if you were to climb at a constant mark number, true airspeed would decrease and calibrated airspeed would decrease at a greater rate. Indicated airspeed isn't half rho v squared. Half rho v squared is actually a pressure, which is why I should really use a squiggly approximate equal sign. It has to go through another formula known as St. Venant's formula to be able to get a speed out of it. So all I can really say is indicated airspeed corresponds to half rho v squared the pressure. Mark number equals TAS over local speed of sound. Over 300 knots, compressibility becomes a factor and causes the ASI to overread. And there's a simple rule of thumb for this. The true airspeed will increase on top of the value of the calibrated airspeed by 1.75% of the calibrated airspeed per thousand feet of altitude. At sea level, ISA conditions, calibrated airspeed or equivalent airspeed equal TAS. To use that example practically above, if you're flying at 100 knots in your light aircraft, indicated at sea level, that would correspond on a nicer day to 100 knots true airspeed. At 2,000 feet, 2 times 1.75 is 3.5% change on that 100 knots. So it will be an increase of 3.5 knots. So the indicated airspeed will be showing 
100 knots. However, your TAS will be 103.5 knots. Call it 103 or 104. As I said earlier, this calculation, if your airspeed indicator has got the knob on the bottom right, you can actually adjust this for the temperature and the altitude and get true airspeed to display when you're at high altitudes during the cruise. Here's a more advanced airspeed indicator dial. The principle is generally the same though. There's a scale going around the outside with the indicated airspeed that a needle can point to. But this one's also got a digital readout numerically of the speed that the aircraft is traveling at. It's also a combined instrument showing mark numbers. It also enables bugs to be put around the side like markers for takeoff speeds, climb out speeds, for example. And it can link to the performance data computer, for example, which is producing performance uh, values um, for your takeoff or climb out speeds.